I think I'll introduce our first speaker, uh, Rick Talyu. Uh, he joined the Canola Producers as their Grower Relations and Extension Coordinator in 2008. Uh, prior to that, he worked for Alberta's Tillage Linkages Program as an agronomist, and he's been a member of the Farm Tech Conference Planning Committee since 1999. So, here he is. Is that working? Great. Technically speaking, I work for the Reduced Tillage Linkages Program. It's always important to remember the word reduced. Thanks very much for joining us for breakfast this morning on behalf of the Alberta Canola Producers. Uh, we do 12 regional meetings across the province each year and when we moved down into southern Alberta for, I believe this is the fourth or fifth year now, we've been doing, instead of doing our own meeting, we've just partnered up with Farming Smarter, provided breakfast in exchange. Jamie tells me I get 28 minutes and no longer to do a quick update on our activities, which is what we want to do. Uh, this is your commission and we are doing all of this on your behalf. So what I want to quickly do is run through uh, you've all got a copy of our annual report, and if you didn't get one, there's probably going to be several left on the tables for you to pick up. So our annual reports there, I'm going to run through our annual financial statements quite quickly, highlight a few of our activities, and go through the budget. Uh, with this format, we don't have a lot of time for questions, but both myself and our director, Marlene Kasky, from this region, who will be coming up following me for a couple of minutes, will be around both days if anybody has any questions. As we're going along, especially through the financials, if there is something you want to ask, uh, we'll certainly pause and do that and just trim our time up in other places. So just to get started, just quickly like to point out the three canola organizations that work on your behalf because there is sometimes confusion over who does what and why there is several organizations. So we are the Alberta Canola Producers Commission. We're the, provincially, the provincial organizations that's funded by your $1 per ton refundable levy. We then belong to two organizations, one, two national organizations, one being the Canadian Canola Growers Association, which is strictly a farmer organization that serves two primary purposes. One is they do the cash advance program, uh, which if you're not familiar with it, that gets you access to $100,000 interest free and up to additional $300,000 at a low interest rate on an annual basis. The other thing that they do is they do a lot of the national policy work on our behalf. So three of our directors, including Marlene, sit on the board along with uh, representatives from Saskatchewan and Manitoba to guide that organization. The other organization that we're a part of is the Canola Council of Canada, which is a complete value chain. So it's the, not just the producers, but the crushers and the exporters as well, and to uh, somewhat of a lesser extent, the seed trade. So in that case, we transfer over 23% or 23 cents on a dollar of every ton we collect over to the Canola Council. So does every crusher and exporter. So whenever a ton moves off of your farm, in the end, 46 cents goes to the Canola Council. And I'll cover off a little bit of what they do, but there will be some of the speakers here. Uh, Greg Sekulich is here from the Canola Council and Justine Cornelson, who's the new uh, Matt Lee fill-in agronomist for Southern Alberta, is at the conference as well. So they really do agronomy on your behalf, as well as a lot of market development and market access. For us, our mission statement's really simple. Everything we do is about improving your long-term profitability, and if anything we're doing doesn't meet, match that mission statement, then we move on and find a new project. Our structure's really simple. Each year, uh, or we have 12 regions with farmers elected out of each of those regions. Those 12 farmers form, form the board of directors, which guides the organization in terms of goals and policy, and then myself and the other staff. Uh, find the programs and, and activities to accomplish those goals. Just a quick look at our board of directors. With 12 directors, we're well covered across the province, two south, two in southern Alberta, three in the peace, the remaining in between, and, and we, we always manage to find a nice mix of large acre farmers, small acre farmers, younger, older uh, men, women, a very nice mix on our board of directors. So this region that we're in this year, which is why we're at the Medicine Hat Conference, is Region 12, and there's a list of the counties that serve it. Marlene is based out of Oyen. Uh, she's on her second last year on the board, having served five years. Well, this will be her fifth year, and so we'll be looking for a new director in this region for a year or two, and Marlene's going to talk to you a little bit about that after I'm done, providing I keep on time. Just wanted to put up a quick graph of canola acres. Uh, the main thing to look at here is I think everybody knows that last year, 2013, was probably the best year canola's ever seen across the prairies, and this year was closer to average. That 1 million tons less of production in Alberta does mean 1 million 
less dollars in levy that comes into the Canola, or the Canola Commission. So for us that meant we had to sharpen our pencil and refocus some of our activities. So our budget is a little bit smaller, but all our core activities remain in place. But as you guys produce less, then we have less to work with, but we still try and make the most of that dollars. Uh, Saskatchewan produces more canola simply because they have more acres, but we produce more per acre. And you probably heard a little bit about the Canola Council's 52 bushels by 2025 goal last year, previous to this crop year, was the first time that that average broke 40 bushels an acre and this year we'll be budgeting on what we think was about a 34 bushel average across the province last year. I'll quickly go through our financial statements. Pretty much everything you ever want to know about the ACPC and then some is in that annual report and the financial statements are in the back. And as part of our uh, structure with Marketing Council, we do go through these at our regional meetings. So last year, or sitting, our statement of financial position there's about $10 million in assets in the, in the commission right now. Of that, the, the third line there is $2.5 million in unrestricted members' equity, which essentially means, for lack of a better term, kind of our float or cash on hand. It's at $2.6 million, but you need to remember that we still have $1.3 million when these statements were done at the end of July that we still have to pay out in liabilities, which leaves us with about $1.3 million of cash on hand, which is about 18% of our budget from last year or so. Uh, we have $153,000 in capital assets, which is furniture, websites, various computer equipment, things like that. Our future commitment reserves at about $1.7 million. What that is, is that's money that's been set aside for research. So when we agree to fund research, for example, if we fund uh, a four-year project with Farming Smarter, that's a, a $60,000 project. We pay $15,000 this year, and then we take the remaining commitment for the next three years and we put it aside in a fund. What that guarantees us is in the event of a crop failure, we don't have to go back to researchers and tell them that we don't have cash to pay them. So when we make a commitment to research, we pay this year's amount, we set the other aside, and then we draw it back into general cash as needed. Similarly, there is just under $4 million in internally restricted reserves. And just to cover those off quickly, it's made up of, of three main things. There's a $300,000 shutdown fund just in case we ever close our doors to pay the bills. There's a $1 million crop failure contingency fund. Uh, the board of directors put this in place kind of based on what happened in 2002 when there was a pretty much a complete uh, crop failure across Alberta, there wasn't any money coming in the commission and we pretty much had to shut down all of our operations. That $1 million will allow us to maintain some of our core activities, whether that's regional meetings or commitment to farm tech. Uh, keeping staff on hand, I hope, is one of them and a few other things. The just under $3 million, uh, $2.7 million in future research contingency. Uh, several, probably four or five years ago, no, uh, Three years ago, we did a strategic plan and the uh, board of directors identified human nutrition research as a key priority for us. So they took $3 million that was sitting as, as available cash and set it aside for funding research to look at human nutrition to advance canola oil in the marketplace. Uh, so far, we've managed to find one project that we've got $500,000 in, which is an anti-cancer study looking at canola oil at the University of Alberta, and we're still looking at the other, at other projects. Uh, we just haven't found the right project to invest that money in at this point. One thing to note, it, to note is that when we do, a human nutrition study can easily be a $2 million project because studying humans is a lot more expensive than studying plants. Our revenues for last year were $5.5 million in service uh, fees or levies. Uh, a refund rate of just under 6%, and then between various projects and interest and grants from outside organizations, brought in an additional 775,000, which gave us just under $6 million in total revenue in the previous fiscal. And this is how we spent it. We spent uh, $1.7 million on research, our Canola Council contribution, which is 23 cents a ton based on the previous year was a million dollars and just over a million dollars on both market development and grower relations and extension. Excuse me. Corporate administration or the cost to run the organization was half a million dollars. The cost to have 12 members on a board of directors traveling from across the province to 
uh, four board meetings a year and representing you on various committees was a hundred and fifty five thousand dollars and our government and industry relations uh, portfolio was one hundred and sixty thousand dollars and because the auditors just couldn't make it fit anywhere else a research agreement that we were part of cost us one hundred and fifty seven giving us total expenses of five point nine million dollars or having us come in a uh, just over forty thousand dollars to the positive. If you were at one of our regional meetings last year, we were budgeting for about a quarter million dollar shortfall to chew into some of that available cash, but between better partnering and a few projects getting canceled, we came out on the positive again. This is the graph that we like to look at. If you look at the light blue and the orange, the nine plus three percent, that 12 percent represents the cost to run the organization, the board of directors and the corporate administration, meaning there's 88 percent that are working directly on your behalf in research, market development, grower relations, and policy work. So because we, let's see, we got, we're halfway through. Any questions on the financials before I go into uh, what we do with that money? Okay. So with the Canola Council of Canada, I already mentioned a few of the key things they do. They, that's the crop production team, which provides agronomic information. There's four agronomists in Alberta. There'll now be four in Saskatchewan and two in Manitoba that are there to help uh, farmers and agronomists advance their canola production with unbiased science-based recommendations. They put together the Canola Digest for us, which is uh, our tri-provincial newsletter in many ways, which every canola grower receives four of those a year. And they do Canola Watch, which is a big part of what they do. And if you're not subscribed to Canola Watch, please go to canolawatch.org and sign up. It's a once a week email in the summer, once a month in the winter, that again, the all the agronomists get together. They talk to dozens of growers and uh, agronomists each. They identify what the challenges coming up in the next week or two weeks are for canola production. And they provide solid science-based unbiased recommendations. They do a lot of market development and market access work on our behalf. So Canola Council, representing the entire industry, the crushers, the exporters, and the growers, they're the boots on the ground in countries like Mexico and India expanding our markets so that the demand for canola stays high, so that the price stays high. They're also our response team when there's market access issues, whether that's in the EU or like a couple of years ago when China tried to close the border to Black Leg. It's the Canola Council that goes there on behalf of the entire industry, including the growers. And then Canola Council also coordinates a lot of the research efforts that we are part of. Uh, because we partner extensively with Saskatchewan and Manitoba, it's just easier to have a national organization do the overall coordination than having each of the provinces looking after it. On our own side, in terms of agronomic and market development research, we have three main goals. Help you grow canola, help you manage the pests that uh, affect your canola and some of the market development work to increase demand for canola. So in 2014, there was $2 million spent on canola research, or committed to it rather, between the money we had spent out and money we had committed. The total projects that were approved were over $30 million. So for every dollar of Alberta grower money that went in the pot, there was another $13.56 added to the pot. So that would include money from Saskatchewan, money from Manitoba, money from the Alberta Crop Industry Development Fund, and a very large investment on behalf of the federal government under Growing Forward too. What's always really important to remember is that without grower money on the table, there'd be no other money on the table. The growers put the pot on the table. When growers put the money in, then government recognizes that if growers are willing to invest their money, then it must be important and government will follow. If the growers stop funding, I'm pretty sure there's nobody in Ottawa that's as concerned about canola production as the growers, so I don't think the money would still be there. So overall, if you were to look at all the projects we have currently underway, regardless of what year, there's about six and a half million dollars of, of grower money in Alberta invested in various research projects. Part of the research budget also includes the canola performance trials, uh, which is small plot and large plot research. Uh, the booklets are being printed this week, I'm told, and will be mailed out to you, and the website should be updated by the end of the week. So this gives you a chance to look at performance data, both on small plots for the companies that choose to participate. So this is funded by the growers, and then the companies that want to participate pay an entry fee. 
If they pay an entry fee, we will include their large plot data that you see in their brochures, but we have a chance to audit it, which is the difference. So we get to go in and look and make sure everything is being done up to proper scientific standards. If the company that you like to buy your seed from isn't participating in the canola performance trials, it's not because we haven't asked, but it might be time that you ask why they're not a part of it and suggest that maybe they should be. Market development, our goals are to maintain existing markets, create new ones, find new uses for canola and promote market opportunities. And a big part of this area, and Marlene's the chair of the Market Development Committee, is to make sure our city friends and neighbors understand the importance of agriculture and canola production uh, and its role in society. So some of the market development efforts, certainly a lot done around consumers. So we have a large presence at Calgary Stampede, which gives us a chance to talk to hundreds, if not thousands of consumers. Uh, this year, we were the lead sponsor of the Taste of Edmonton in Al uh, Taste of Edmonton Fest, Taste of Alberta in Edmonton rather, which is Canada's largest outdoor food festival. So everything done there was cooked in canola oil. They used 95,000 liters. And again, it was a great opportunity to show consumers, cooks and foodies uh, that canola oil is the healthiest oil. A lot of work done with students and teachers. Our learncanola.com website has Alberta approved curriculum for grades K through 12 that teachers can drop into science classes. And then a, another thing we do is a lot of work is done to directly speak to food influencers. So doctors, nurses, dietitians, bloggers, food writers. Make sure the people that are informing other people about food choices know that canola oil is the healthiest option for you. And why? Lowest in saturated fats, body loving balance of two to one omega sixes to omega threes, and a smoke point that'll knock your socks off. <laughs> so market development research, I covered the $3 million set aside, the, the money into anti-cancer studies and the quest for new projects, primarily looking at heart health, anti-inflammation, and diabetes health. Just a snapshot of three of, I think there's 10 or 11 books in total now in the Chase Duffy series that we've produced with the help of the Crop Industry Development Fund. These books are targeted at uh, children probably ages seven to 11 as a young reader series. So for the teachers that bring it into the classroom, it's an excellent tool to help children with their creative writing skills, but each of these books has an underlying ag theme, which might be soil health, beneficial insects, biodiesel, GMOs, uh, things along those lines that can help them understand agriculture uh, from a proper perspective. Grow relations and extension, this is the area I looked after. We got three goals, help you grow canola, help you market it, and help you manage it. So we'll work uh, in partnership closely with the Canola Council Canada. We sponsor and support as many events as we can find that will provide value and education to you guys, including our commitment to Farming Smarter, where we do have them funded through our research portfolio. And we also fund a number of their events, including this conference, which we think is probably the best conference south of farm tech, which we're also involved in. And we do the grain pricing information on our website that we took over from uh, the provincial government about six years ago. Three events I wanna to touch on really quickly coming up this year that we think you should consider attending. The first one is Cano Lab, which is the world's greatest indoor diagnostic extravaganza under one roof that we hold at Olds College. Uh, our friends at the Devonian Garden have already planted 2,500 pots of canola. So what happens when you show up at this is we have a bunch of canola growing out in a greenhouse where we can clearly demonstrate nutrient deficiencies, disease symptoms, herbicide injury, small groups uh, at Olds College for one day at a time. This thing sells out in the first 24, maybe 36 hours. So if you have any interest in coming, please mark down December 15th at 8 a.m. And that's when registration will open online on albertacanola.com. A couple of marketing workshops that we want to cover off. Um, we're trying something different. Instead of four day workshops, we're partnering with FarmLink. So there'll be one in Lethbridge and it's kind of a four part series. Show up the first day and it's kind of a lecture style thing that covers in or options, futures, puts, calls, the technical side of marketing. Then you leave and you have access to FarmLink's video library of training sessions. A month later, we'll bring you back for more of a workshop type of a session uh, where we'll run through some scenarios if these are the market signals, what would be the proper strategy to go through, and then we'll follow it up with a webinar. And again, probably in a couple of weeks, you'll find all those details on our website. And because farm management's important to us, we will run our second annual 
uh, leading edge farm management series. Again, there's one in Lethbridge. This year we're going to focus on risk management. So we'll have Merle Good and some of his stable of farm management advisors there, as well as Danny Kleinfelter, who's considered to be one of the leading farm management speakers in North America. Our government and industry affairs, this is our lobbying efforts and our policy efforts. So we work closely, as I mentioned, with the Canola Council or the CCGA on national issues, but we have a full-time policy person that sits with them to make sure Alberta issues are addressed and also to make sure that we're aware of everything that's happening provincially, whether that's new regulations, whether that's safety issues, whether that's uh, watershed plans coming into effect. Lobbying's on there and sometimes people worry about, are you a lobby group? And our lobbying efforts aren't big, but we think they're really effective. So one of the key events that we'll be a part of along with eight other commissions is next Tuesday, we'll host, I believe it's our third annual, it's called the Chops and Crops event that we do in downtown Edmonton. And it's basically a meet and greet for governing MLAs that come in. And for many of these MLAs, it might be the only time that year where an Edmonton or Calgary MLA actually talks to a real farmer. So it's a great opportunity for them to meet someone like Marlene, talk to them about what the issues are in the canola industry or whatever commission is represented and what the issues are on the farm so that when these people are making voting decisions, maybe they think back to what, one of, to what a real farmer may have told them. I have some information on our budget, but we're really short on time, so I'm gonna go through this really quickly. Uh, revenue, obviously, as I mentioned, is expected to be down uh, because of less money coming in. That $835,000, that's research money coming out of that reserve back into general cash flow. The spending structure is almost identical to last year. The one item that's up is corporate administration, and that's because we're moving into a new office space. ACPC's been in the same office since before it was a commission. It was really built for two or three people. We have six or seven staff members now, and if we all show up in the office on the same day, last person in sits on the toilet. So we're going to be investing in a new office, some new furniture, phone lines and that, so that's really a one-time expense that's got that bubble, and then it'll be back down to closer to normal. So when we look at the same graph as before, with that bump in corporate administration, we're up to 17% to run the organization, meaning that 83% of the dollars that come in are working directly on your behalf. I'm going to give Marlene some time here, so I just want to leave you with our website, which is albertacanola.com. Uh, completely redesigned and responsive, so it looks great on whatever screen you're on. On every single page, there's a sign up for our newsletters, and we would love it if you signed up for our electronic newsletters. It costs us, with 15,000 canola growers in Alberta, it literally costs us $20,000 to mail you an empty envelope. We can send you an email with updates on events, news releases, uh, issues in the canola industry once or twice a month for basically nothing. So if you want information on events, want information on what we're doing on your behalf, please sign up for our newsletters. And with that, I'm gonna ask Marlene to come up. Oh, sorry, Marlene. A couple other things, Farm Tech. Our 25th annual general meeting is at Farm Tech on Tuesday the 27th. If you're coming to Farm Tech, we'd love to see you at our AGM. We'll give you some free popcorn. If you happen to be in Edmonton and just can't get enough of an annual general meeting, you can attend for free. Uh, we do have at the Farming Smarter table, ACPC as well as Farm Tech have each donated a three-day pass to the auction. They're valued at $360, so please feel free to bid on those. And if there was anything that you wanted brought forward as a resolution to our AGM, all we ask is that we get it 10 days in writing ahead of the 10 business days prior to the annual general meeting so that we have time to do proper background work and prepare necessary materials to present it. If you have something you want, to discuss as a resolution, please see myself or Marlene, uh, contact Marlene at your time, or have a call into our office. Thanks, Rick. Uh, as Rick said, I am Marlene Cassie. I'm the Alberta Canola Producers Commission's um, Director for Region 12, this region. ACPC is happy to sponsor breakfast this morning and share with you some of the things the Commission is doing on your behalf. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for breakfast. The crop and livestock producers in the crowd, as well as their support staff, the researchers, plant and animal scientists, agronomists, pest disease specialists, and the like are all working together, 
using innovation and technology to help growers in their quest for environmentally and economically sustainable food production. So thank you all for breakfast. On another note, uh, Rick alluded to uh, the commission is made up of 12 regions with a director for each region, serving a maximum of two three-year terms. This region 12 will be up for election one year from now. If there are any canola growers in the crowd who are interested in becoming an ACPC director, I'd like to tell you more. Please look me up. Also, the entire board and staff will be going through a strategic planning session in the new year. If there are any canola growers who would like to have their ideas or direction that you would like to see taken to the board to pursue, feel free to look me up again. I'll be here for the next two days. And uh, with that, thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>